Hello, PodFam, and hello, Rachel. How are you? I am good. My microphone is actually working this week. So, you know, in true February fashion, we were having some weeks of technical difficulties, and uh, I'm knocking on wood as we speak because this is almost the end of February, but today is going to go great. It's going great. We're putting good vibes out there, and hopefully all the planets are out of retrograde or whatever was happening. Exactly. Because it was like, oh my God, week after week, oh. something something was crashing. <laughs> something, something. It was just, just, just not fun. But um, just I'm going to make a forewarning before we start. I'm recording in my living room again, and it is uh, cat zoomy uh, time. So if you hear a little rustling, that's just the cat playing, uh, the cats playing with their springs. So I apologize if it's annoying. You can just reframe it and be like, oh, that's really cute. I know. Oh, they playing. sound so adorable. So cute. But how are you doing? I am good. I have some exciting news that is kind mm-hmm. of the inspiration of this episode. Yes, you do. Uh, I am going to be moving in a couple of short months. Woo. Yes, things are coming Long around. Time. That manifestation, guys, is working. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I have kind of been purging, decluttering, not minimalizing minimalistic guys saying okay. <laughs> whatever that is I'm not a minimal I'm not wow I am not a minimalist but I am trying to pare down on a few of my possessions that mm-hmm. you know, just collect you know if you're if you're in a space for long enough it's amazing how much you kind of um collect without even knowing it and granted I really don't have that much stuff, but still I somehow managed to collect. And I just, I just feel like I don't need to hang on to a lot of these things and I don't want to take Mm -hmm. it to our new place. So that is why we are kind of talking about a uh, decluttering Mm -hmm. talk this evening. Specifically, we're going to be discussing your closet and clothing. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, what are you drinking tonight, Rachel? Uh, I'm very predictable and I'm back on my dream chamomile tea. Ah, dream is back in stock. It very is. nice. It is. Like I said a few weeks ago, I have a lot of black tea, not a lot of herbal tea. Mm, yes. And we record at 830 at night and I'm kind of, I have weaned off caffeine uh, enough that black tea would keep me up all night. So this is what you get. Yep. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm kind of bringing through with a new tea and I love how I just opened the up, ep- open the episode saying like, I'm decluttering, getting rid of things. <laughs> like I did not just go to the tea shop and buy four new teas. Okay. But tea doesn't count. Tea, mm-hmm. tea is a consumable. You know, exactly. And I have been so good at drinking down a bunch of like remnants of different teas. So you know what? I deserved some new tea. Mm-hmm. And I'm really happy with my selections. So, you know, that's that's one thing. It's okay to have a little bit of excess, right? Exactly. Yes. So the one I have tonight, it is an herbal tea and it's okay. called Akuna Matata Organic Chai. Oh, yes. Lion King reference. Little Lion King. And, you know, it's just, it's fun. It's spicy. And, um, what I like about an herbal chai is it doesn't get that, uh, bitterness, of Mm -hmm. when it's like a black tea chai. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's no caffeine because we're not about that life right now. No, I've been really good. So I'm trying to stay on it. Um, I don't know how your withdrawals have been Rachel, but like I had a low grade headache, headache for the past like week or so. Mm. And That's I don't no know fun. if it was caffeine related or if it was, it was something else, but it was just like enough that I noticed that it was there, mm-hmm. not enough to like be really bothered by it. So yeah, I those mean, are the it, worst types of headaches yeah. too, where it's like, you kind of want to close your eyes, but you also are like, you're chill enough that you could go to work still. Yeah. Like it, it yeah. was one of those things, like I just had to keep powering through. And then like, I'd stop every once in a while just to like, okay, 
breathe through it a little bit. And then I was like, okay, now I'm fine. And I would, mm-hmm. and I would keep going. Um, I've been okay for the past few days though. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that was like a bit of a caffeine withdrawal. Cause I was hitting the coffee pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and by hard, I mean like one to two cups yeah. a day. <laughs> um, but still, still, I don't think it matters. Like the quantity that you have, if it's that ritual and your body is always like expecting it when you first wake up, then mm-hmm. um, I think even just missing that, you're going to have an adverse reaction. But definitely, hopefully that is that is past now. Hopefully it is. Also, I have an ex- I have a little update about a personal goal that I sort of achieved today. Oh, halfway. let's hear it. So uh, probably since the beginning of the year, uh, maybe a little bit before, but I think the beginning of the year, I have been doing some personal training stuff. And uh, like back in November, because like we've talked about before, I've been like super into climbing. I just, I felt like my muscles were kind of going away because I wasn't doing a lot of like strength stuff outside of climbing, which you kind of need to do if you want to excel with climbing, just because like you can't really do it enough to like really get that strong. At least that's my perspective. So I've been doing some supplemental training that has involved a lot of like upper body work. And one of those goals that I set was I want to work towards being able to do a pull-up. I still can't do a full pull-up guys. That'll probably be like a three-year thing, but we've been working on, I think it's, is it eccentric or eccentric pull-ups, whatever. It's the ones where you hop up and you let yourself come down slowly. And I did one today where like, let me tell you, I did it so slow and so controlled. I was so proud of myself. When like literally a month and a half ago, I tried to do it and I fell off the bar. So yay, this is growth. exciting growth. So I'm very proud and excited to see where it goes. So maybe I will actually be able to do a pull up one day because I've never been able to do those before. Nice. Have you noticed like a difference in your grip strength? Um, yes, I have but I don't know how much of that is like pull up versus climbing versus climbing and pull up training. Right. So like grip strength definitely is better, but like I'm doing a lot of things too that would improve that. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just this is going to, I'm going to make you laugh with this because she has us do um, farmer carries at the end, which is when you carry two kettlebells or two dumbbells and you have to just basically walk with them. And as I'm going, I'm just like, you know what? I've been doing this since I was like seven years old, but with horse water buckets. Right. I was thinking water <laughs> buckets, hay bales. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Armor just like, carries. That's, that's easy stuff. I know. I was just like, she's just like, oh yeah. And this is how you do it. And I'm like, no, no, no. I understand. Yes. Don't it's worry. Like, I know what's up here. I know what's up. But then I think like when we would carry two like full buckets of water at the farm, like that's a lot of weight. We were so strong. I know, right? You don't even think about it. And then you like lift it up, pour it in. You're like, yeah, okay, next one. Yeah. And I, you do I, that like 10, 15 times. I know. Could I do it now? Probably not. <laughs> so there you go. We were strong kids. Strong yeah. Now kids. we're just working to get back there. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, would you like to introduce our topic today? Yes, let's jump back into it. So, um, like I said at the top of the episode, I'm trying to pare down on a few possessions. And I feel like we always have this intention, especially when um, we're heading into spring. We always feel this need to do the spring cleaning, get rid of things, get new things. And um, I feel like this really goes along the same path that we've been talking about for, for a while now of just trying to have things that are, you know, hopefully of like a better quality and maybe a little bit more locally sourced. Mm-hmm. Um, I've really been trying to like, like literally had to filter out clothes that are like just super cheap and like literally they're falling apart. And like, I have mended a few of them but I'm just like, I can't keep sewing these seams together. Like, this is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Um, This garment is more like stitches than it is like the original fabric. Um, So yeah, I'm just trying to make that shift a little bit. And then also realizing like, 
there's so much stuff. Like we, we live in a society of excess and it's, Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not our faults because like, this is literally how we've been raised and programmed for generations. So it's just very natural for us to think of like, oh, well I need these things. Like I, Mm -hmm. I need these possessions because like that determines my happiness, my success, my, my comfort and my wellness. But we, we sometimes do take it to a point where there's just like so much that, Mm -hmm. you know, we just don't value it. And it's just, it weighs us down. And especially if like you need to move or you just want to feel like fresh in your space, it can be really difficult when you're just like surrounded by things that maybe you don't care a lot about. Yeah. I find like with our belongings and stuff, we apply a lot of sentimental. Oh, number one them. for me. Number one. Yeah. And like, at least with my closet and stuff, I've gotten, gotten a lot better <laughs> with this recently, but like up until last summer, I was still carrying around my sorority formal dresses. Yeah, like same. I'm never going to wear those again. And let me tell you, they're actually just in the garage in a bag. Mm-hmm. I haven't even gotten the heart to take them to like, you know, our local like, you know, charity center. Yeah. When like, I'm never going to wear them again. And I think that's something at least like as you're kind of, you know, you've left school, you're in your career, like moving through your late 20s into your 30s, where there's a lot of things that like you used to wear Mm -hmm. that have that sentimental value but like you kind of can't wear them but there's almost part of you is like well I could wear them again and sometimes it's also I could fit into this again and I'm just like you're not going to fit into the crop top that you wore when you were 18 and that's okay (laughs) no like your body your body has changed from a child to a woman exactly and I think too like speaking of the crop tops as well (laughs) like I think we hold this sentimental value where we're like, no, 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 I'll wear that again. But it's like your style has probably gone through like three or four different iterations by that point. They're like, are you going to wear the crop top and the mini skirt? Like really? When, when is the last time you just went out in a crop top? Like just, just Mm -hmm. casual. Like I was like, you know, yeah, this is my style. I'm going at crop top. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Honestly, I kind of miss the crop top days though. That was a time. Yeah, that was a time. I don't think we need to go back to it though. We can, I like my stomach covered. Yeah. And like, if you love wearing crop tops, wear your crop tops. It's just like my style taste has changed where meh, I, I'm not going to wear it. So like, why am I hanging on to like 10 of them? Right. Yeah. When I could pass them on to someone who is going to love them. Mm-hmm. And with that, let's kind of start at that sentimental value. I, I am so guilty of this. I, I know I have been my whole life and it just it doesn't pertain to clothes. It's like to lots of different things. Um, like if someone gifted it to you, mm-hmm. you know, you, you always feel like, oh, well I have to hang on to it because so-and-so gave it to me. Yeah. And I find a lot of the time, like most people don't remember that they gave you something, mm-hmm. you know, just a few things that are not like super important that I think they kind of forget, right? Like if they bought yeah. you a sweater for your birthday, they don't, they don't remember. <laughs> I mean, perfect example. For instance, I bought a friend of mine, I think two years ago, maybe three, a beautiful sweater from Ari mm-hmm. for Christmas. And I saw her wearing it a few months ago and I went, oh, that looks familiar. Did I get that for you? And she was like, yes. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? So there you go. Prime example. They probably yeah. won't remember. <laughs> yeah. So I find that this is the hardest thing. Um, letting go of, of sentimental items. And, you know, there are a few things that you can hang on to and it's, it's fine. But it's when you're hanging on to everything mm-hmm. that... Um, You just have to take your time and slowly let it go. And like one thing that I do, I don't know if this is like the best thing, but um, if I'm not quite ready to let something go, I will pack it away. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if I flip my wardrobe for the season, um, I pull it out again 
and I kind of reevaluate. So if you have items that you are just struggling with emotionally to let go of, try that. Just try putting them away Mm -hmm. and then having them out of sight, out of mind for a while and a little distance. Then when you do bring it out again, you know, reevaluate how you feel Mm -hmm. and maybe then it's the time to, to let go. Yeah. And another good way to do this too, if you're in an apartment that maybe you don't have storage space to do that is, uh, like for me, I have to put all my stuff in my closet. Like I can't portion it out seasonally. We just don't have the space. Just like with your hangers, just if there's an item you're unsure of, flip that hanger the other way around from how you're hanging your other clothes and just give it like four months or six yeah. months. And then if you've worn it, then flip that hanger back around. Okay, cool. You still wear it. If you haven't, pull it out and evaluate how you feel about it. And be like, really, honestly, I haven't worn it in six months. Probably haven't thought about it. Do I really need to keep it? Yes, exactly. I think that's a fantastic way to have everything like visible to you. If you're trying to decide, you know, um, if you want to let it go or not, that is an excellent way to do it. And how you kind of want to look at all your clothes, like you, you lay out everything and you put into piles, you know, there's your absolutely yes, absolutely no. And then your maybes. And it's those maybes that you want to put on the hanger backwards. And then um, I find it's good to attempt to put them into an outfit and Mm -hmm. see if that's your style. Are you comfortable in it? You know, do you feel like yourself? If you don't, then that is your answer right there. And you need to part with that item. Um, But if you do like start wearing it and like you get an outfit together with it and love it, then good. Put that in the yes. And then it becomes part of your rotation. And I know this is something like I had mentioned a few episodes ago, like not saving the quote unquote, like special items for special occasions. You know, I think we should all be just wearing our clothes. Like if we bought something and we love it, let's enjoy it. Let's use it. Um, it's no good to us if it's just always living in a hanger. And then, you know, one day maybe you you can't wear it anymore and you never really got to fully enjoy it. Yeah, I agree with that too. And like when you have those dresses, I'm just going to use dresses as an example that you bought for a special occasion in the past and then you never wore it ever. I have one of those. You know, that is one of those items that you do have to pull out and look at them and say, okay, this was a time in my life where I would wear this for a special occasion, but seriously, am I still going to wear this style? Because for instance, I had a dress that is currently in the bag downstairs with my other sorority dresses that I never wore. And it was essentially like a, like a white mini dress that kind of had a toga vibe. And it was like deep V in the front, deep V in the back and a little keyhole cutout. And I was just like, no, somebody <laughs> Where am else I going. <laughs> somebody else deserves this item, and somebody else will love it. I do not know where I'm wearing this now, <laughs> unless yeah, I was it, going to Greece, which I am it, not anytime. Yeah, soon. which which you're not going to anytime soon. Yeah, I so um, as I've been kind of cleaning up my closet and organizing my clothing, I've been trying to work a few pieces into like work outfits or just uh, casual wear. And I had a blazer on this week and it's a very sharp blazer. Like it's it's beautiful fabric. It's, it's from banana Republic, but back when like they made really great clothing um, it's like just a, a brown linen blazer and I wore it and I'm like, this is cute, but honestly, like I don't feel comfortable in it. Like this is just Mm -hmm. not me. And I've been hanging onto it for years, literally. Like it was, it was given to me by one of my mother's friends. And then I had it in my closet for a while and wore it a bit, a few, like maybe eight, nine years ago. Um, But it never really got into the regular rotation. Mm -hmm. So I wore it to work one day and I was like, "Mm," at the end of the day, you know what? No, this is a beautiful jacket, but it's not beautiful for me. Yeah. So I'm going to make sure it goes to someone who is going to enjoy it because that's their style. Exactly. Yeah. So that kind of leads into the the next thing. We need to, like, we don't want to 
contribute to landfills. And, you know, fast fashion is one of the worst polluters on the planet. And um, I'm, I'm really trying to challenge myself with thrifting more items and um, just being a little bit more environmentally responsible when it mm-hmm. comes to my clothing. And that's, that's why I'm trying to move away from fast fashion and get more staple pieces that I'm going to have for a long time. And they were like ethically sourced, you know, for, for the environment and for um, the people who make the garments. Mm-hmm. So a lot of us, we kind of um, get our pile of no's and we, we default right to the donation bin. Mm-hmm. or, you know, the Salvation Army, a few of those um, charity types that are doing great work trying to, um, you know, uh, get money raised for the community and recycle a lot of items. Mm-hmm. The thing is, the reality of that is only 25% of those items actually make it onto the, the shop floor. Because Mm -hmm. they get inundated with so much volume that uh, they just can't possibly get it all sold. And so I'm I'm not exactly sure what they do with everything. Like some of it might be just donated to different charities and groups, but a lot of it does end up being thrown away. Mm -hmm. So that's where you want to kind of be that first line of like deciding you know, where should this item go? Mm -hmm. Because I have some things where they have been well loved and it just would not be right for me to pass off, you know, uh, you know, throwing it away, um, passing that on to the, uh, like salvation army or, Mm -hmm. or any charity like that, because they're going to look at that garment being like, why would someone donate this? It's full of holes. It's falling apart. Like it's for the garbage. Yeah. So that's where I kind of um, separate my piles a little bit of nose. There are the things that like they are threadbare. They're done. Mm-hmm. And I don't put them in the garbage. Um, you should look into your town's uh, waste management services because a lot of the time, a few, few times throughout the year, they will have textile pickups. And so in my house, we keep a uh, tote that is just full of like old socks, old underwear, like anything that um, should not be donated, uh, that is ready to be discarded. Mm -hmm. Um, It goes in that bin. And then quarterly, I believe when the textile collection is, that's when we send it out because then, you know, at least it's being more ethically um, thrown away. Mm-hmm. instead of just ending up in the landfill. And that is, again, a big part of fast fashion, why it's so um, awful for our environment is because so much of it ends up in landfills. So that's just something you want to be cautious about. Like, don't just dump your crap onto these organizations. Actually go through it and say like, okay, this still has value. This does not. And mm-hmm. um, I find pick pick the organizations because there are, the organizations like Salvation Army that, you know, they're, they're very open to taking some things that are maybe a little bit more um, of a used condition. Um, still wearable though, like make sure you're giving things away that, you know, they don't smell, they're not stained and they're not full of holes. Um, mm-hmm. And then maybe you have pieces that are still perfectly good and it's just not your style anymore. Those are the things that you should take to stores. There's so many of them popping up right now, especially ones that are looking for a little bit more of an elevated style. Those are perfect to go. And then you also might get some money on the side, which is always great. Um, The other thing you can do, I believe Facebook has a bunch of different marketplaces where people will be selling clothing. So you could always like swap it or sell it. Um, That takes a little bit more work. So I do understand people who maybe have the intention to do that, but just not the time. I'm definitely one of those people. Um, So I give a lot of my nicer things to consignment stores. So then it can be passed on to someone who is going to love that item. Yeah, I agree too. And I think, hmm, so another view I have on this is when you give, uh, like maybe you're looking through your clothes and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to see if 
one of my friends mm-hmm. wants these items or maybe your friends are bringing you theirs. And I think I want to kind of go to the perspective of somebody is bringing you their things because this has um, happened to me very recently where, you know, when somebody kind of brings you their stuff that they don't wear anymore, it kind of feels like a little mini shopping trip. Mm -hmm. And you also feel kind of like you can't really say no to certain things. I don't know. That's just me. Like, I feel kind of like I have to be like, oh, wow, this is so cute. Or like, look at it with that perspective. Yeah. Like really take the time when those items are offered to you to be like, will I actually wear this? Mm-hmm. Or is this just going to take up space in my closet that I already don't have? Because like, for instance, like I got a pair of pants that were essentially like salmon pink, <laughs> filaire, like cottony yoga pants, like woolly yoga pants. And I'm like, where am I wearing these? Where? I've never seen you in anything salmon colored. They did not, they did not look good. (laughs) I no longer have them, but also too, like going back to whether it's you who is maybe passing down some clothes, like if you're getting rid of like your old college stuff, like the stuff you used to wear out to the bar, if you have somebody in your life, who's going through that phase in their life, be like, Hey, are you interested in this stuff? You know, like kind of bring it to people who you really think like, this kind of matches their vibe, Mm -hmm. you know, like I think it was a few years ago. I had a, a little in my sorority who she was like 18 as I was graduating. And I was like, here you go. Here are my lacy bralettes that I will probably never wear again. Put them to good use. And you know what she did? Yeah. See, that's perfect. Like pick your audience if you're going to be donating things um, or giving them away to friends or family. Like I definitely have a a few things that I know like, oh, so-and-so will want this. And then if they don't, fine. It then gets either consigned or donated. Mm -hmm. Um, There's always these different avenues that you can try just to see where the item can can go. Um, And like, I agree with you. If you're the one who's being offered things, be very careful because I remember being in like grade 11 or grade 12 and a friend of mine, like I I swear I literally purged her closet Mm -hmm. and it was like two garbage bags full of clothing and shoes. Guess where it all ended up? The garbage? In my closet. Oh, (laughs) and then the garbage? (laughs) After a while, after a while, I had all these things and I'm just like, this doesn't even fit me. Um, This I would never wear. And, but it took me forever to go through it and actually get rid of it. Because I think when you're younger, you know, like you don't have the money to always buy a mm-hmm. lot of clothing. So that's why I was just like, oh, she has really nice clothes. So I'm going to just take everything. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you just end up with a full closet and um, it's okay to say no. Mm-hmm. I would do that a lot too. Yes. It's okay. You're not going to hurt their feelings. No, they don't want to keep the clothes anyway. <laughs> no, no. They're just going to pass it down the chain. Um, so let's go into our next thing. We kind of talked about hanging on to things, being really sentimental, but let's go to the opposite of that. And that is the extreme purging and the extreme mm. decluttering. I have been guilty of this one. And I think with the dawn of being a minimalist, um, and, and really trying to get items down, a lot of people will get rid of things and just be like, well, I could just like buy it later when I need it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not really a great philosophy to live by because one, you're spending more money and two, you're probably throwing away something that's perfectly good just mm-hmm. to then maybe buy it again later and probably for more. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's also a dangerous territory Maybe you're really paring down and getting rid of stuff. But if you're left with then nothing, you're going to fall back into that pattern of being like, well, I need to go out and shop. Mm -hmm. And you're just, you're just going to fill your closet right back up. So that one is a slippery slope. Um, Mm -hmm. I understand when we go through phases of just like, okay, I'm just getting rid of a few things to like, I just want to get rid of everything. Yeah. But take it slow. Like, don't, don't do it all in one night. 
and just get rid of things right away. It's okay mm-hmm. to just sit on it for a little bit and then rethink. Cause I've done that so many times where I'm just like, I'm getting rid of this and this and this. And then like days later, I'm just like, I really want to wear that sweater. So I take it like <laughs> back out of the pile. But then it's something that was always like really in my wardrobe. So I'm like, you know what? This is probably a barn sweater. So I'm just going to keep wearing it and it's mm-hmm. fine. You know, so, so just don't go the total opposite of Mm -hmm. getting rid of everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I think that tip that we talked about a bit earlier of the, just flipping the hanger to to a different direction really comes in handy because, you know, I've done it too, uh, a little bit recently, like a year and a half ago where I just like cleared out so much stuff, like including like a white Mm t-shirt. Like, why did I do that? Because now I had to buy another white t-shirt. Yes. Um, it's just good because sometimes you're like, oh, I, I don't think I'll wear that, especially when you're trying to clear up space in your closet. For instance, you're moving right mm-hmm. now. Sometimes the place you were at before has a bigger closet. Sometimes the place you're going to has a bigger closet. Perhaps it's the other way around and you have a smaller closet where you're going and you need to make space. I would just like be like, mm, like, eh, whatever and get rid of it. And then suddenly I'm rebuying like, the white t-shirt and stuff yes like just slow it down Mm -hmm. flip the hanger for the season and see if you touch it and if you don't touch it then you can get rid of it you have our permission (laughs) yeah your green light good to go Mm -hmm. and um I actually really want to touch on a piece of on a garment or type of garment that um no matter what it seems like we hold on to forever and that is underwear oh my gosh I, I have been trying to get rid of so many <laughs> pairs of underwear um I think I mentioned it before probably like I worked at Victoria's Secret through university so like yeah naturally like I just got given free underwear through work or like paid next to nothing for it whenever they came out with like a new style so yeah I could I swear I could have gone like a couple of months and never worn the same pair <laughs> twice like yeah I had that much and I know what, what you're probably going to lean to, Rachel, is your style changes, your body changes. It um, does. That style of underwear that I used to like live for, I hate it. I hate it so much. Yeah. If there's like a little bit of wear, like if it's, and a lot of them are getting old. So I'm just like, good, good, get old. It's time to go. <laughs> like I don't yes. have it in me to throw out like a still good pair. Um, of that style but if it's like the elastics going or it's getting a hole in it I'm like out you go thank you you were great and like you know as we women get older we do get a bit bigger and if things feel like they're flying to the wind things change man things Things change (laughs) things change it's okay to get rid of your extra small and small pairs and buy a medium it's okay yeah. And you'll yeah. feel a lot more comfortable. But like literally underwear is the one garment where it could literally be holding on by a thread. And I would still be like, I can keep going with this it's for a little fine. bit longer. <laughs> like, no, <It's-> just, <laughs> just, just toss it out. Yeah. And this just, is absolutely, it. <laughs> this is absolutely something. Do not take it to like the Salvation Army. Oh, just God, no. Put it out of its te- misery. <laughs> it's for the textile bin. Okay. You that that's where it belongs yes um yeah that's something also socks like um I'm pretty good with my sock collection now where for a while it was things like it had a hole in it but I was like it's still fine I'm like no like your your toe is going through and it's uncomfortable just get rid of the damn sock um yeah so socks and underwear you can be ruthless Mm -hmm. ruthless with those ones you know you don't you don't need to be too careful when it comes to that kind of stuff because I think the majority of us have definitely pairs of underwear that do not need to to go on in any further just put them out of their misery I have many and like staying in this vein bras Mm -hmm. just if it no longer retains the shape of a bra just just send it on its way and if for instance if you have a white bra which even though you've tried to bleach the hell out of it, it is now a light beige. Just time to go. Just say goodbye. 
you don't you don't need to keep ugly bra okay you don't need to keep it yeah you can buy yeah, another I've, ugly bra I've got one it's like old reliable I know but the thing is like the underwire is about to pop out and the cups yes. are like you know when the cups stretch and they just don't even keep their shape anymore mm-hmm. um I've got that going on it's like on the last hook because it's so stretched out in the <laughs> elastic band and it's had a good life like I've had this bra for definitely nine ten years mm-hmm. and it, it was a great bra but it's it's time to let go I just haven't found one <laughs> that I like enough to replace it with mm-hmm. um, because it's a beige bra so like I always need a staple beige in the collection and I just haven't found one that I like as much as it so <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day I will have a new beige bra, but today is not that day. Yes. So I'm going to leave that tangent, um, but put your underwear, bras and socks out of their misery. They've done, yes. they've done enough for you. <laughs> they've served you well. They're probably the items that have been washed like hundreds of times. And you're like, wow, it's still made it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one piece of fabric that just won't die. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but anyway, that kind of relates to uh, one of our last topics here is the sunk cost fallacy. So this is when you've spent like money on a, it doesn't really matter what the value is because that value of um, how much is, is a lot for us is different for everyone. Mm-hmm. But you kind of think like, oh, well, I need to wear it like this many times. I got to get my money's worth out of it um but the thing is like once you've bought an item you've spent that money okay Mm -hmm. like you're not hanging on to it it's not appreciating value um if it really isn't working for you just let it go all right and if it's in good quality sell it okay Mm -hmm. and then you can get a little bit of money back but I feel like I've, I've definitely been guilty of it before where I'm like, I haven't worn this enough yet. Like I can't get rid of it because I spent like X amount of dollars on it. I need to wear this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just doesn't happen. You know, it's it's becoming less and less for me because I am more conscious about the things that I'm buying, but that definitely has been a problem for like a few pieces that I definitely spent more than I should have, but it's on things that like, I, I don't wear enough if at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I've never like really struggled with it. I struggle with it with like coats for some yes. reason. Yeah. Uh, but that's probably because like coats just run more expensive than most things yeah, I would it, buy. It, it is those like bigger ticket items, like the mm-hmm. you know the the fancy dresses, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, that we have a harder time letting go because we haven't gotten our value out of them yet. But mm-hmm. sometimes like that money is gone. All right. You just have to be okay with that. Yeah. Um, the majority of our clothing for the average person are not investment pieces. Like exactly. Unless you're buying yeah. like vintage purses or jeans or shoes or whatever, and they're in great condition, mm-hmm. your clothes are meant to be worn and then eventually worn out. Yes. And like, you know, speaking of like fancy dresses, like special occasion stuff, maybe you wore it to a wedding. Mm-hmm. It's important to remember, like, yes, a lot of formal wear is like three hundred dollars for a dress, but it did serve its purpose if you wore it to that wedding. Yeah, like, you don't need to wear it eight other times to make it worth your money. Yes, but on the flip side of that, I know this is a little off topic. Um, I think we need to normalize wearing like very nice items again. Oh yes, right. Absolutely. Like I feel like we're we're so bad for being like, oh, well, I wore this like gorgeous dress to one event, and now I can never wear it again. Mm-hmm. Um, screw that, guys. Let's let's wear pieces again. Like, and I think a lot of it is like some people. I don't know. They if you're in the same crowd or if there's like a lot of pictures now with social media, you don't want to be seen in the same outfit mm-hmm. over and over again. Um, but when you think back to like when people did not have so much excess, like their good dress was their Sunday dress Mm -hmm. and they wore it every Sunday and they got married in that dress. And like, um, you know, they just used to, they use their things so much more. And it wasn't about like, Oh, well, I've already worn it like twice. I don't want someone else to see me again in it. Like, no, you spent your money and you love that item. Wear it again. Mm 
you know, um, that's something I try to do because I usually have a gala or two that I go to every year Mm -hmm. or a formal event. And you know what? I recycle dresses. Like I might not wear it back to back years, but I'll have a couple that I, that I filter through. And then I'm like, good. I wore it again. And I loved it. It looked great. And no one came up to me and said like, Hey, didn't you wear that? Like before it's never happened. (laughs) It hasn't happened yet. So I think we need to normalize that. I a hundred percent agree when I, I'm just like specifically thinking of this dress that I bought for a wedding in the summer last year. That was this it's beautiful. This beautiful, oh, beautiful floor dress. length gold navy dress. And I'm just like, I really don't know. I would love to wear it again. Mm-hmm. I have no idea where that would be. Yeah. But so- <laughs> that's an item that it's okay to save. Like if it sits exactly. for a year or two and then another wedding comes up and you wear it again. Great. You know, like definitely wear that dress again because it deserves to be worn again. Mm-hmm. And then if you have pieces that, you know, maybe it was your prom dress and you're really not going to wear it again, then send it out to consignment or, you know, give it to someone who is going to wear it because like those things are expensive to buy. And our world has just normalized, like being able to afford this kind of stuff, but most people can't. Mm -hmm. So, you know, something you've only worn once do some good with it and, and pass it on to someone who maybe can't spend like $500 on a, on a dress. Mm-hmm. I have a I have a question for you actually on this topic, very unrelated, sort of. But how do you feel then about like the option to rent wedding dresses? Because that is a huge cost for people for literally something they will wear for eight hours. Mm-hmm. So you know, I know for me, like I'm kind of like I want to be able to pick out my dress and maybe have one that's pretty custom to me. Yeah, but like, how do you kind of feel about how like passing that on through consignment or even renting it out? So like, you know, because I feel like it can be a pretty wasteful industry. Oh, I I think the wedding industry is a huge waste. Um, and don't get me wrong, love weddings. Uh, love what they stand for but there are so many things like the bridesmaid dresses the wedding dress the tux like everything Um, a lot of these things are only worn once Mm -hmm. and it's a shame because you know you're spending literally thousands of dollars we're out of the hundreds on that kind of stuff when we're into the thousands and I totally get like having the wedding dress like made just for you or whatever. Like it, it was all picked out for you by you. And granted, I would probably, I will probably do that too. Like I kind of have a vision of what I want and I don't know if I would find that secondhand, but I am all for like renting a dress or getting one, um, secondhand or on consignment. Actually, my friend who got married this past summer, her, her outfit was, was from consignment. And like, I'm pretty sure she thrifted it. She looked stunning in it. She just got she it did. to herself. And like, you'd never know that it had already done a wedding, you know, like it was in pristine condition. So she looked phenomenal. I, oh, she gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So I think that is something that we should not look down on people for, because I think it's economical and I'm all about being thrifty. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Do we have any more topics or... I think let's leave it there. All um, right. I feel like we've hit everyone with a lot and hopefully this inspired you to maybe go through your drawers, go through the closet, just start looking at what you might not want to wear anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also make sure you think about building that wardrobe that you love and you're going to wear. Um, you know, there, there's no time for things that you're just never going to wear and not enjoy so exactly that's those are the things you need to part with and then really keep the things that you love and then just love your wardrobe even more I think it helps you narrow down your style and you know one good um, philosophy is to you know one item in one item out and then you kind of maintain that balance of not having too much extra exactly and always throw out the underwear that has a hole in it Yes. 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 Don't keep those. 
don't keep those. So if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts <laughs> or <a rating laughs> leave it somewhere, you know, wherever. Leave it somewhere or a rating on Spotify. And uh, if you'd like to email us, you can do so at tea with Laura Rachel at gmail.com. Yes. And uh, one last thing I want to throw in here is if you are now on a roll to be decluttering or just trying to understand your style and your wardrobe, definitely go to YouTube. And there are so many channels that can help you out with a different like organization style or decluttering style, or just help you understand like what's your capsule wardrobe. And um, I found them really helpful. I have been watching them like crazy for the past few weeks, as I've been thinking about things that I want to um, get rid of. And one really great channel that I've been loving, she is a fellow Canadian in Toronto, and that is Christina Mykes. Uh, she has an awesome YouTube channel. And I mean, a lot of these tips did come from her videos and I've been just watching them pretty much all of them. <laughs> Literally, that's my night now. I declutter and put her videos on and they've been so helpful. And they really did push me to um, try building outfits with items that I don't normally wear. And that has really helped me narrow down things that like, they're beautiful, but they're just not for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely recommend that channel. It's Christina Mykas and it's her last name is spelled M-Y-C-H-A-S. And with that, live like tea. Live like tea.